everyone, Sebastian here from GreenMusicProductions.com and I am back with my classic Cubase review and this time it is Cubase 10.5. I'm super excited. I call this one the Pro Tools Killer and you'll see why in a couple of minutes but first if you like that kind of content please click the like button and subscribe. I also make content for another channel called Gameloft Music and Sound. I'll leave a link in the description so feel free to check it out and subscribe if you like that. So let's dive right in. Uh, the reason why I call this the Pro Tools Killer is that all the features that I missed from Pro Tools are now in Cubase 10.5 so I'm super happy and the first one I want to talk about is the Combine Selection tool. Now those who are used to Pro Tools know about this. It actually combines the two tools right here, the Object Selection and Range Selection tool. So you can click on this orange button right here to enable it or disable it and what it does is if you go on a track you can imagine that there is a invisible line right in the middle and when you go under that line you have the object selection tool and when you go over you have the range selection tool. So of course all of the uh, fade in fade out and all other features on the event still work as usual so there's no drawbacks about this. You just go on the lower part to select and you go on the upper part for range and you can obviously do everything you can with both tools. Of course, uh, the keyboard shortcut for the modifier still works. So if you hold Alt, no matter where you are, the scissor tool will appear. Control will snap. Uh, whatever you set in your modifiers, it will still work as usual. This is a feature that I really missed in Pro Tools. It also worked for automation. So let's say I want to uh, lower this section right here. I go on the upper part lower this but then I want to tweak this dot I go on the lower part select the dot change it works like magic so this is exciting uh, next they included uh, an EQ spectral curve comparison mode I often use that while mixing but I used to use a third-party EQ to do this but now it's in Cubase so I'm super excited if we have multiple tracks let's say we have two guitar tracks like this let's listen to them We have uh, the lead guitar here and the rhythm guitar. So let's say I want to unmask them because sometimes two instruments will use the same frequencies like kick drum and bass and it's always a mess when you're trying to mix uh, to uncloud one another. So uh, let's select this one first and go under the channel settings. If we go under the equalizer tab, we can see that we have a new section over here. If we enable this button called activate channel comparison, we can choose uh, two tracks and this is by default the track that is selected but I can choose audio 2 which is my other guitar track and now if I press play I can see the curve of the two separate guitar tracks so I can easily apply EQ to unmask a certain part that is clouded by the other one. But that's not all, I can also solo them right here. And switch between each other. So let's say I want to go to the EQ of the Audio 2, I just click on it. And just like that, I'm tweaking the EQ of channel Audio 2. This is really useful and if we go under the equalizer settings, we have more options. We have the obvious ones uh, that used to be there like change knobs or change control sliders. We also have an option called show FTT pre-EQ curve. So the curve that you will see will be pre-EQ. So no matter what you do on the EQ, it won't affect the curve. And the old FTT post EQ, as you could see, uh, actually draws a curve. So even when you press stop, you will still see the maximum peak and the curve from both channels. So you can start uh, EQing even after you press play. We also have transparency uh, reference. So you can change the transparency of both tracks. If you feel like you can't see the orange line as much, you can change that over here. Really neat addition, especially for mixing. I use that all the time, so I'm excited about this. Another great feature that they included is actually a feature that was already there, but they really improved on it, and it's uh, the MIDI retrospective recording. Uh, we used to have a general uh, retrospective recording, which means that, let's say we played a certain part without pressing record beautiful piano sound. Let's say I'm messing around and I really like what I just did and I'm like, oh, I should have recorded that. Well, it's super easy now and you have per track control for that. 
So if you go under this uh, little down arrow here called retrospective recording, you can click on insert as linear recording. So what I just did now magically appears there as if I recorded it. So that's really nice. And the same goes uh, for when you press play without recording. Amazing part. Uh, so let's click on insert as linear recording and it keeps the cursor position and everything. So it's perfect. And the same goes for, uh, let's say I have a loop and I enable the loop recording and I just press play instead of pressing record. And I play. So I played a couple notes. It did two or three passes and I'm like, oh, I really like what I did, but I didn't record it. There's another option called insert a cycle recording. And what it does is it includes all of my takes in separate events on top of each other. So that's really neat. And the cool thing is if I go under another track, it's going to have its own cache. So it will only record what I play on this track and it will keep what I've played on this one. So this is really uh, useful and it's one good example of technology helping creativity because most of the time technology gets in the way of creativity but this is actually the opposite so it really helps keep you going. Uh, another feature that I really missed from Pro Tools is the import session data. For those who don't know, uh, let's say you're working on an album and you have a template for all of your songs and you recorded 10 songs in different sessions, but with the same templates, but then you mix the drums and you really like the mix you did on the drums and you would like to apply that mix to the next song in a different uh, session. Well, it's now super easy to do in uh, Cubase 10.5. If we go under import tracks from project, let me select another project. Uh, it is as powerful as what we had in Pro Tools called import session data. Now it supports almost all track types. So MIDI, audio, instruments, folder tracks, FX tracks, chord tracks, all the good stuff. You can decide what you want to import in your new session and where you want to put it on a new track or an existing one. You can decide what you want to import, events, parts, channel or inspector settings, automation. Uh, it is really useful and you can decide where you want to import them. So at absolute position, relative position or cursor position. Another cool feature is that it can also detect the tracks that have the same name as the session that you're importing it from. So if you select everything and you click on select matching, it automatically uh, selected bass as my destination track since it has the same name as the other session. So if you have a template with all the same tracks name, it can easily do that for you. So this is really powerful. I'm super happy about this. I've been requesting that for a long time and I'm excited about this. It's going to save me a lot of time. Another thing that I'm excited about that was in Pro Tools is the export video option. It's now finally in Cubase. So I have a video right here. I set my locators. I go under file export. I now have video, so hallelujah, we can now export videos directly into Cubase. For now, it only supports one video format and one codec, but it's the most used one, so MP4 H264. Obviously, we can decide where we want to put it, uh, what's the name, we can add the time code. For now, it only supports stereo, so no multi-channel, but that might come in a future update, who knows, and we can choose if we want real-time export or offline export. Uh, you can see all the information of the video and audio track that's going to be in the final video files right here and the estimated size. So really useful. Thank you so much. Uh, this is another thing that was in Pro Tools, but not in Cubase. Uh, a really good thing that we have now also uh, in Cubase 10.5 is the offline normalization according to loudness. So if I select this event and let's say I'm mastering this, this is a track that I'm mastering. If I go under process, I can go under normalize and usually we only had peak normalization. So it was using the peak DB to normalize, but that's not accurate since nowadays loudness is more important than peaks, both when you're mastering music or when you're uh, mixing a trailer or a movie and it has to go, let's say on TV where it has a broadcast standard. They're all using LUFS, which is much more precise according to what we hear and the loudness that we perceive. So it's now super easy to set it to a certain LUFS value and normalize that according to it. So if you're mastering an album and you want the master to be at 
at minus 12 for all the tracks. You can easily do that now. If I click apply, only this version, and it normalizes it at minus 23. So super happy, uh, good feature once more. Um, they added a couple of tools into Cubase 10.5, like the multi-tap delay. So let's take this track as an example. And it's a really creative delay. Not only is it a regular delay, but you can also have many effects and it's super powerful and creative. So we have the usual settings like uh, the delay time, feedback, the amount of taps output. You can pan the different taps. So you can uh, create your own rhythm if you want. So let's say I add two taps right here. I move them around. I want to pan this one to the right and the other one to the left. Well, it's going to use th this rhythm right here. It's super easy to add effects to a specific tap. So let's say this one, I want it to have a chorus and a bit crusher. Um, you have a lot of effects. If we look at it, we have chorus, phaser, envelope filter, bit crusher, pitch shifter, delay, auto pan, gate reverb, frequency shifter, overdrive, filter, vibrato, flanger. There's so many things that we can do and we can apply them to the whole loop, the tap effect or the post effect. So that's at the end of the chain. We can change the mix. And we have another cool uh, thing here uh, that I use a lot while mixing. A lot of pro mixer use that technique and it's a docker. So what it does is let's say uh, on a vocal, you have a reverb on the vocal while the person is singing. If the reverb stays the same, it's usually masking the vocal, but it's really helpful when you have the tail after the singer stops singing. So what we used to do is have um, sidechain compression on the reverb. So when it was singing, there was less reverb, but when the singer stopped, the reverb would come up. But now that's included in this plugin and you can choose the amount and it's going to dock when audio is playing and go back up when it stops playing. So let's listen to a preset just for fun. Analog stereo echo. That's always good. You can change the character. Also, you have custom ones, digital modern, digital vintage tape and crazy. So it really emulates all kinds of delays. So let's listen to it now. It is quite a simple uh, delay. Let's try another one that might be a bit more crazy. Um, let's try this. Let's add some distortion. And maybe a little vibrato. See how cool and creative that is. I'm uh, really happy about this plugin. I didn't expect that to come into Cubase, but they decided to add it. So it's always fun. Also, one other thing that I'm super happy about is Pad Shop. They included Pad Shop 2 and they removed Pad Shop Pro. So all the features from Pad Shop Pro are now integrated into Pad Shop 2, which is free with Cubase. So it is really uh, amazing what you can do with this. It's a granular synth. So uh, you can now import your own uh, sample. So let's try it out. Let's say, let's say I want to import a sound from the media bay. There you go. You can change the format. This is really creative and fun. So there are a lot of crazy things that you can do with it. It comes packed with different presets. If you have Patch Up Pro, well, there's no reason to use Patch Up Pro anymore because Patch Up 2 includes all of those features. And it, as you can see, it's packed with different creative presets. Really neat. I'm happy about this. I'm not going to use it a lot, but every time I need a granular synth, I used to use third party plugins for that, but I'm going to use patch up two now. Another cool feature that I missed from Pro Tools is actually a, the colorize mix console channels. As you can see now, it's super easy to do in Cubase. It's not only the bottom part that is colorized, but the whole track and you can change the preferences and the intensity of the colors. If we go into edit preferences 
under user interface track and mix console channel colors uh, you can decide if you want it enabled or not and you can change the strength of the color so if i want it to be more intense i can easily adjust that and let's say uh, the selection is too bright or not bright enough now you can tweak it and make it brighter or darker so you can easily see what channel you have selected. It's really helpful because it helps when you have a big session and you're used to, let's say, having your drums a certain color, it's easier now to find them in your mix console. And also when you select a track or a channel, it's now highlighted in white, even at the bottom. Uh, so it's easier to see. Small tweaks, but really welcome tweaks. I'm happy about this. It was in Pro Tools once more, and now it's in Cubase. Uh, so thank you, Steinberg. Uh, they changed a lot of small things. If we go back into the uh, key commands, uh, we now have under the macro, if you click on show macro, we can now easily uh, move around, add or delete commands. So let's say I want to move this one up or down. It's super easy to do. If I want to add a command over here, uh, it's easy to do also. So they tweaked a lot of stuff. Uh, they changed a lot of things in the score editor. If you're interested in that, go uh, read the manual. It's really helpful. They did a lot of tweaks in the score editor. So it's even better now. Uh, they added key commands for a bunch of features. So yeah, I, I really encourage you to go read the manual because there's a lot of small tweaks under the hood that are helpful and makes the experience better. So uh, that's it for me. Um, I'm really happy about this because I can't find any reason why I would prefer Pro Tools anymore. There's no features that I would want in Cubase that are in Pro Tools. If you have any features that you still think were better in Pro Tools, leave a comment below. Let me know. I would like to know because for now, uh, there's no reason for me to use Pro Tools anymore. Uh, Cubase has everything that I want. As usual, if you like that, click the like button, subscribe and see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.